Um, I appreciate you all being here. I'm Amanda August. I'm the curriculum coordinator for the district. This is Brittany Larson. She is doing an administrative internship with us, so she's going to be helping me out tonight. Um, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to go over the new expectations for Common Core for math and what it's going to mean for us and for our school district. And then I'd like to kind of open it up for questions and discussion and um, get your, your feedback and your input. And it's not going. All right, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, the new Common Core standards were initiated by the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers. And we, what they really wanted to do was give more standards that, were, that would help our students become more career and college ready. And it, they're all based on very sound, solid, solid research and practice. Um, the new Common Core standards, there's fewer of them, they're much clearer, and they're much more rigorous. This graph here looks at the percentage of educators that report students who are prepared for um, college level work in mathematics. Um, and the graph bar on the left is high school teachers say that only 98% of their students are ready for college level math. Um, and then post-secondary instructors are saying only 26% are ready. So we're seeing not all students are ready to go on for college level math. Um, so what this means for our students is that nationwide um, two-year and four-year colleges need to remediate in math. So when our, the writers of the Common Core were looking at this, they decided that we really needed to prepare our students better in junior high and high school. So that's kind of where the research behind these new standards, particularly for math, started to come about. We're going to kind of look at math as it looks before Common Core and then with the new Common Core state standards. Before Common Core, math was procedural, focusing on computation and problem solving. Um, a lot of memorization of facts. Most students didn't begin algebra till high school, and now with the new Common Core standards, instruction balanced. All students are fluent in computation and proficient in problem solving. Really goes into how you solve the problem and explaining how, why you did it and how you did it. It also has an emphasis on algebra beginning in sixth grade, which is a new change, preparing students for higher levels of math in high school. Um, the foundation of algebraic problem solving is laid in kindergarten. So the steps are starting early on in kindergarten, and it's just building as they go on. So it's very important to go through all the, the steps. All right, so again, the Common Core is really going to help our students learn more effectively. It's going to help the teachers teach more effectively. The standards are based on scientific evidence. And we're really trying to make sure that students nationwide are meeting all the same high levels of rigorous math expectation. Now you're wondering how this is going to help your students. Um, just kind of brief over, students who master the Common Core standards will be ready for college. So it's all focusing on going to the higher level math skills and going into college. Um, it's going to also help them understand the steps and understand more than just the memorization. Um, high school graduates are moving directly into the workforce, which will have more critical reading, thinking, and problem solving, and content skills employers are looking for. So really focusing on those life skills that they're going to need. All right, so some of the key shifts in instruction and practice for math, um, these new standards, they focus, they're, they're kind of honed in on certain specific focuses for particular standards for the grade levels. They're more coherent, they link to major topics. We're really focusing on real world application. Um, and they're much more rigorous. We need to have our students have a, more of a conceptual understanding versus just being able to know how to plug in numbers and go through a procedure. We're really focusing more on the how and the why versus just the end result and the end answer. 
Um, this diagram focuses on how math problems are going to be looked at and how they're going to be solved. Students are going to be using manipulatives to work problems through by using counters or using um, marbles or anything to help them actually physically touch something. They're going to be using pictures and graphs to help present data and to interpret data and to um, present it as well. Written symbols, so that's um, using any of the math numbers, numbers no. variables. What essentially these are, is these are the five math modalities and students on the new park assessment will be asked to transfer from one to the next to the next. So instead of just showing your answer in one way, students are going to have to show their answer in several different modalities in order to be able to show mastery of a, um, of a new standard. So instead of just being able to solve an equation, students will be asked to not only solve it, but provide an explanation, tell me where I can find this in real life, and show me with a picture or with manipulative. So they will have to do the same problem in several different of these modes. And using these modes to solve those problems as well. Um, this kind of shows the four levels of um, how students are um, learning. And they're going level one, you can see that they're recalling. And there's all, and you guys have it all in your handout, so you'll see it closer um, now or when you get home if you can't see it. Um, has to do with recalling information. Uh, level two is a skill and concept that has to do with classifying, graphing, organizing. Level three, strategic thinking, has to do with comparing, investigating, um, and formulating. And level four is extended thinking, and that's connect, design, critique. So those are the four steps that students are going to be going through to and solve problems and to go through the thinking process. And we're really going to be focusing in more, especially at the 5A level, more on levels three and four. Right now, math, um, we tend to think of it as very recall and very let's use this variable and these numbers in this equation and let's find an answer. Now we're kind of shifting from these level one and these level two ways of thinking and teaching and learning more towards levels three and levels four. So again it's becoming much more rigorous, much more focused on the why and the how versus just getting an answer correct. All right, so we do have some new strands as far as what is going to be taught and expected of the students to be able to know. Um, in grades three through five, we're focusing on these five major areas, operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations in base 10, number and operations fractions, measurement and data, and geometry. In grades six and seven, we are going to focus on ratios and proportional relationships the number system, expressions and equations, geometry, and statistics and probability. And then finally, in eighth grade, we are going to focus on the number system, expressions and equations, functions, geometry, statistics, and probability. There's some overlap, but in each level, we're really going deeper, focusing on more higher level skills. In each grade, we have um, expectations for students to be fluent in various um, components. So in fifth grade, um, we're looking for students to be able to multiply whole digit numbers using a standard algorithm. Sixth grade, fluently divide multi-digit numbers with, uh, using the standard algorithm. Fluently add, subtract, and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm. Fluently interpret and compute functions. Fractions, Fraction. I'm sorry. Um, Seventh grade, solve multi-step problems with positive and negative rational numbers in any form. Fluently write and solve problems using linear expressions with rational coefficients. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational numbers. And in the eighth grade, fluently work with linear equations requiring algebraic manipulation of proper properties using of operations. Fluently solve problems involving volumes of 3D shapes, surface area, proportional reasoning, and multi-step numerical problem solving. And again, these are the fluencies where students are going to have to not only demonstrate that they know how to do them one way, but know how to do them several ways and transfer between those different modes and be able to explain how they got their answer and why they got their answer. <coughs> 
So the Illinois State Board of Education has actually come out with concept maps and units for grade, right now, um, what's on their website is grades six through eight. Shortly they will be having all grades K through eight. Um, units and lessons that they are going to be expecting all Illinois schools and all Illinois teachers to teach. There will also be common assessments K through eight. And so according to ISBE, students have really, um, they said that students should really not be skipping any content area or any grade levels because each grade level for the Common Core Standards is so specific and so in-depth that there really isn't a whole lot of overlap in we're going to review and then we're going to get into new stuff. Students are just going to be expected to retain what they know because there are fewer, clearer standards so that teachers can begin teaching new material right away at the beginning of the school year. Um, it's going to be a unit-based curriculum that really focuses going a lot deeper into the content versus covering several different topics. And so what that really means for us, for District 46, is that we kind of have to look at what we offer as far as math goes. Now students who are currently on the current track of algebra and geometry and then going into AAT in high school, those students will stay on that track. But for the new students coming in, we're going to be starting with the new Common Core units um, given out by the Illinois State Board of Education. And there's going to be two tracks. There's going to be fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, what students would regularly get, and then a fifth grade advanced, a sixth grade advanced, a seventh grade advanced, and an eighth grade advanced. And then after that eighth grade advanced class, students will move right into a geometry class in high school. So on top of the handout that you're getting um, with all the information we're giving, there's um, two websites that we listed that are great resources. Um, if you do have additional questions or clarification, you want more information on it, the um, U.S. Department of Education State Contacts um, is the top one, and then the Common Core State Standards um, is the second one, and those are really great resources for you to um, be able to go to. Also, if you'd like to look at the units that Illinois State has actually put out that we will be teaching and following, they are on the Illinois State Board of Education website. Um, as soon as they release their assessments, those will also be on the website for you to be able to look at and really understand the full intent and the rigorous aspects of the instruction that we will be giving to the children under the new Common Core. Um, so at this time, I'd like to open up for questions. If you have questions, if you need clarification, please. And if you didn't get a handout, we have yes. more here. Mm -hmm. There's some gaps because, and you're not doing the review anymore. Mm -hmm. How do they get that? We are really going to focus on making sure that we do provide differentiation for all students. So if they're struggling or if they need those gaps filled in, we're really going to make sure that each student gets what they need so they are able to meet each of those common core standards. And how are you figuring out the gaps? We, we will have pre-assessments and post-assessments, so we'll know. And plus we have our data from NWEA testing and using those, yes, so using what the NWA test results are and using some tools that we have, we're able to identify what skills students need. So kids going into seventh grade algebra, algebra They will stay on that current track. Okay. And kids who are younger, what's the track again? Um, kids moving into fifth grade, they'll either be on one of two tracks, a fifth grade, what fifth graders normally get, or an advanced track. In, in, in high school, they'll go right into a geometry class. High school, actually, also, they have Common Core, and their classes are becoming much more rigorous, much different than we typically think of algebra and geometry and AAT. The high school is really having to rethink what they're teaching because what we consider algebra now is really moving down to what all eighth graders should know and be able to do under the Common Core. So again, it's much more rigorous. It's going to be much more challenging for our students. So we really want to make sure that all of our students are prepared. So algebra in high school is going to be very different coming up with a new Common Core than what we currently think of algebra. Yes. 
Um, I believe principals are still working on scheduling and putting students into classes. So, um, I don't. I believe we're going to go based off of last year's NWEA scores, and we're kind of moving kids into into a track based on that. How do we know? How will they know what track their student is on, whether it's the regular track or the advanced track? It also comes down to teacher recommendation, whether they've been in that 90th percentile in their classroom work habits. So if they're showing, you know, 100%, 95% on almost everything they're bringing home, they're scoring in that 90th percentile. And then, um, you know, they're also, the, the teachers are recommending that they could use a challenge. That's kind of what bases that. And it's not set in stone. We don't have a drop dead number that we say, well, you didn't meet this number, you can't go. You know, we kind of look at the whole child. So what, how can we meet their needs academically, socially, and emotionally? Some kids, you know, they may not be great test takers, but in the classroom, they're consistently getting 100% every single time, and we may need to, you know, challenge them. But that differentiation within the classroom is also going to help us meet those needs. The high school, currently, they're not planning on changing their math track, math track. Under the Common Core, there's two different ways that high schools can go. They can stay on the traditional path, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and so forth. Or they can go to what is being called an integrated model, where every year all the students will get algebra, geometry, trig, calculus, and it'll just kind of be more of an integrated class model. Um, right now, Illinois has not mandated which way high schools have to go. Um, so high schools are, right now they're sticking with that traditional model, but I have a feeling that we might be switching over to an integrated model kind of down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand what, I mean, I understand that this all sounds really great, but, you know, with AP classes and all the stuff that are available, mm -hmm. he might want to go to school. They'll still be able to, what their high school is going to do, even if they don't change, is they're going to look at their scores, they're going to look at, at what they're doing. If you saw back on the 8th grade, 7th and 8th grade both um, had uh, parts of geometry in that. Right, so that's going to be, you know, that's going to be there, and if they have those, if, you know, their test scores show, then they, they have that choice. All of our kids, no matter what, you know, where they are, um, are going to go through the standardized testing, are going to, you know, they're going to look at their, as Jody said, classwork and those types of things to make a determination of what level they would, they would fit best into. Uh, at the high school. At the high school level. I mean, and, I, and, I've, and I've seen, and I've had my daughters have, entered in different levels in the high school and you know so I I can see where you know there's always that if I've got a child who's really excel and really gets math you know are they going to be in the highest level and honestly by the time they get to high, if they are in high school if they're in the highest level they're done with calculus by junior year they're in statistics which is I feel kind of almost a step down from the from the calculus uh, BC that would be the highest level they would take. So they're they're kind of even by that senior year still just kind of filling a math um, requirement. So no matter if they're in if they're in that advanced, if it's determined that wow this kid based on their scores on their they, they might go into that AET track or that honors geometry track. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, I've got two quick. Okay, want me to use the mic? Yes, please. Thanks. Two quick questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on the commoncoresstandards.org page, you said that with the uh, math requirements all has been scientifically researched. Are those links on there to some of those studies, or can you provide um, links to that um, those scientific studies as well? 
Um, I don't remember if the scientific studies are on either of the pages, but I'm more than happy to put those on a slide and then put the, all the slides up on our website for you to okay. get access to. I know there's also a lot of scientific research study. The new tests that our students will be taking will be called the PARC test, P-A-R-C-C. And so if you go on the PARC website, there's a lot of information, a lot of research on, on that website as well. Okay, and the second question was, um, have you or has the state done any comparison um, as to the Common Core standards versus the what the standards have been up until now? We're the park testing people are actually doing a field test. They're working on field testing, which will then provide us with more information on that comparison. Any other yeah. um, how will the school be? Changing the instruction, will there be new uh, textbooks? Will there be more instructional time? There will, we're going to really work on looking at our textbooks and seeing where they align with the standards. And we're hopefully going to supplement. And the state has been really wonderful in providing us with resources and performance-based assessments and performance tasks that we can kind of start modeling our instruction off of. They sound like a very basic question, but when you say that the children are going to be taught different ways yes. of doing problems, yes. three times four is 12. Are they going to supposedly, hopefully, be coming up with the same answer no matter how they do it? They are supposed to not only be able to come up with the same answer no matter how they do it, but they're going to have to show, okay, I know that three times four numerically is 12, but I can show this in a picture. I can write a real world situation where I show that if I put four apples into three bags, that's going to give me 12 total apples. So they're going to have to be able to go back and forth between all of those different modalities and really show that. But even under the new Common Core, if, even if they said three times four was 11, if they were able to explain their reasoning and explain how they came up with their answer really in um, words and in oral explanations, and they showed it in the picture, but they just got the final number wrong. We're really more focusing on the how but and the way. to we, be correcting them. Oh, absolutely, right? <laughs> absolutely. We want our students to compute correctly, but the emphasis is really moving more towards the explanation and the how and the why, and can I really talk through the procedures that I went through to get this answer? And not just knowing that it's 12, but why is it 12? How do I know that? Getting uh, new textbooks. When is the next math textbook adoption? I know we're on a five-year cycle. Or um, I'm new to this position. I just recently came in, so we're actually going to look at all of our different curriculums, and I still need to evaluate where we are in the textbook cycle for all of the different subject areas. I don't have a definite answer for you right now, but it's something that we are working on, and I am looking into. Assume. Let's say that your child is put in the regular math yes. and they seem to be breezing right through. Later yes. on the line, you'll be adjusting depending oh, on how they're doing. Okay. Yes, yes. And we will always be differentiating instruction to fill in gaps where necessary, to provide extra challenge where necessary. We really want to make sure that all of our students are being challenged and really being provided with the instruction that is best going to help them. Any other questions? I'm, I'm sorry I missed the beginning. Why are you doing this? We, the new Common Core state standards are coming out, and Illinois is a state that is not only adopting the new Common Core standards, but we're also going to be moving from taking the ISAT test to the PARC test. And so these new standards are mandated by the state. So we are having to make this switch from the old Illinois learning standards to what's the, what are being called the new Illinois learning standards, which is the new Common Core state standards. So this is mandated. Is this just math or is it no, it's across the board. Um, the new Common Core standards actually really cover math and um, English and then what they're calling the technical subjects 
We're actually adding in new standards called the Next Generation Science Standards. Illinois will be adopting those shortly, and they work with the Common Core. Social studies, we're still kind of working on. But everything works within the new framework of the Common Core. Did you guys go over the big, big reason? Because as a parent, that helped me. Was the college readiness? Yes, this is okay. really based on college and career readiness. Um, what high school and college professors are really finding is that our students are not prepared for the workforce, they're not prepared for the rigor of college work. So that's why this whole initiative, and it's a national initiative, has taken place to really not only help our students better be prepared for college and careers, but to really make us more competitive on a national level with other countries and students and kind of what they're producing as well. And I believe it's 48 or 49 of the 50 states are adopting the same Common Core state standards. So if, should you move, your student will be able to go and pick up right where they're at. They'll be aligned with it and it's going to have more uniformity. And it, like Amanda said, it is the entire state of Illinois and I believe it's 48 or 49 states have the exact same standards too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because right now, you'll save money as a parent and your child will save money because, I don't know, talking um, Because basically, 60, I think it's 65% or 63% of students go into college needing a developmental math class, meaning that their skills are not meeting what they need for college. And so they take those classes, they don't get credit for them. So it doesn't go towards any degree. So that's, to me, that was like a huge um, a wake up call why we need to kind of get their skills better before they get to college. And that's why everyone's kind of adapting this. So as a parent, that helped me. Mm -hmm. What has Grace Lake been doing knowing it was coming to prepare teachers and students and staff so it's not a smack in the face next year? We've really been working on what we're kind of calling hybrid spiral courses and we've been trying to integrate each year more and more of the Common Core to really prepare our students. Um, we're working on aligning our report cards to be standards based. We're finished K through 3, we're just about finished with 4 and then we're going to assess what we need to do with the 5th through 8th grade report cards to really make sure that how we're grading our students and what we're presenting to parents is really a true reflection of the Common Core and what is happening in the classroom. Um, we're, we will be implementing these new units put out by ISBE starting this school year. The park assessment comes out next year, so we need to be fully aligned with Common Core by the time the students take the park assessment. And the park assessment is going to be replacing ISAT. Yes. And it will be, the park assessment is actually just a little bit more information. Instead of being a paper test like the ISAT is, it will be all online. It will be all computer based. Do we offer that currently with summer school? Is there a summer school uh, math program to help students if, should they need it to catch up? It's just the offerings that we offer this mm -hmm. summer. And as we see needs in the future, that would be something mm -hmm. that... It's always something that's developing and changing based on the needs of our students. We can offer what they need over the summer. Are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, I heard futuristic, and maybe that's what is going to be implemented mm -hmm. is pass fail. Like, you either pass or you fail. Like, students won't get. You know, like eight. as far as grades five through eight, we haven't determined that as a Grays Lake district. Some districts may be looking to go to that. Um, we're really looking to make sure that we're grading based on the standards and making sure what students can show us in the classroom really meets the standard. So how we choose to do that, that this, we're still kind of looking at what needs to be done with the 5th through 8th grade report cards and standards. So we're, we haven't decided. I don't foresee us, I don't think, going to a pass-fail. I'm not really a fan of it. But yeah. I'm just saying that's what Yeah. As far as Gray's Lake is concerned, I don't think we're moving to a pass-fail. 
And if you, anyone didn't get a packet, I can give those to you when this is And over we will be me. putting, <laughs> I'll put some extra links on there to, to those studies and we'll put it up on our website so it's available to everybody if you didn't get one or you know somebody who couldn't attend to get one. Thank you all for coming and, you know, getting information and supporting your kids and their education. And if you ever do have any questions, please feel free. Call me, email me. I'm always more than happy to talk to anybody, answer questions, anything. But thank you so much for coming.